Shabbat Shalom. We're all so inspired by Mindy. I dedicate these words of Torah tonight to the children of Newtown who will remember tomorrow and all those who have perished. This week, as Rabbi Sissenwein reminded us, we read Parashat Vayichi, taken from the opening verse of our parsha. And Jacob lived in Egypt 17 years. Vayichi, meaning, and he lived. It's an ironic name because the parsha tells the story of Jacob's death. Nearing his end, he pleads with Joseph to return him to the land of his ancestors for burial. He gathers his children who surround him that he might offer them his final words of blessing. Just a few verses later, Joseph also dies, and the book of Bereshit comes to an end. Bereshit, the book of creation, the story of God forming the universe itself and breathing life into the first human being, and it ends with death. It is worthy to note that the simple vav in Hebrew can mean and, but, and yet, all at the same time. So we read, Vayechi, yet he lived. In other words, the text is signaling to us, despite his approaching death, pay attention to Jacob's life. This week we mourn the loss of another great leader, Nelson Mandela. And he and Jacob had so much in common. Jacob's birth name was Heel, reflecting his persona as a trickster, an imposter. And Mandela was born Roli Lala, which means troublemaker. Like Jacob, Mandela would struggle under the mantle of leadership, and he would acquire a new name. Just as Jacob becomes Yisrael, Roli Lala became Madiba, the name of his clan and the symbol of his leadership. With the deaths of Jacob and Mandela, we are reminded, Vayechi, yet he lived. And we ask, what does it mean to have lived? For life to have had meaning and purpose. And despite their heroic stature, these two men were just that, men, human beings who lived and died. President Obama captured this so eloquently in his eulogy for Mandela. He wrote, it was precisely because he, Mandela, could admit to imperfection, because he could be full of good humor and even mischief, that despite the heavy burdens that he carried, we loved him so. He was not a bust made of marble. He was a man of flesh and blood. He was a son and a husband and a father and a friend. And this is why we learn so much from him. And this is why we can learn from him still. For nothing that he achieved was inevitable. In the arc of his life, we see a man who earned his place in history through struggle and shrewdness, persistence, and faith. He tells us that what is possible is not just in the pages of dusty history books, but in our own lives as well for he was just a man. And what does this mean for us? So recently, a friend of mine shared with me why he had become more meditative and mindful 
and why he was limiting his very successful business so that he could focus more time with his family. He told me that he began to suffer from an irregular heartbeat and he became frightened by the strange physical sensation. He thought he might be dying. There is no better reminder of your own mortality, he told me, than when you can feel your heart beat. Medical tests show that my friend was not in danger, but still he was moved to change his life. That we might say of him, Vayichi, yet he lived. Sefer Bereshit begins with the breath of life and it ends with that final dying breath. As we reflect on the deaths and the lives of Mandela and of Jacob, let us hear our own hearts beat. Let us feel our own breath, knowing that we are dying and we are living all at the same time. This Shabbat, let us revel in the beauty of our lives, in the joy of our relationships, and in the opportunity that we each have to transform the world around us. At his inauguration, the first democratically elected leader of South Africa, Mandela, famously and courageously called for forgiveness and reconciliation despite all he had lived through. And he did so, he said, not just for the sake of nation building, but in order to birth a new world. Mandela understood the classic rabbinic maxim that in every life there is an entire universe, in each of us an entire world. But he also understood that when we individually lead lives of love and forgiveness and justice, our entire world moves closer to redemption. Mandela also said, what counts in life is the difference that we make in the lives of others that will determine the significance of the lives we lead. Someday, about each one of us, it will be said, Vayechi, and yet he lived, and yet she lived. So breathe in, and breathe out, and listen to your heartbeat. It is pumping oxygen-infused blood, giving your body life and your mind consciousness. Take in that Ruach Elohim, the divine animating source of life, with every inhale we take and with every exhale we share. And when it stops, And yet, we have lived.